premium ECM outdoor fan motor, model 142, has been used in residential and light commercial HVAC since the year 2000. It's not as well known as the variable speed motor because it's predominantly used in higher sear systems, typically starting at the 15 and 16 sear range. However, it is very similar in design to the model 2.3 variable speed motor. It is a brushless DC permanent magnet rotor and it is 80% efficient versus 60% efficient PSC motors. It's also built with all of our current technology including speed limiting, ball bearings, surge protection, and encapsulated electronics to prevent water damage. You'll notice there are no plugs on the motor. The motor is hardwired directly from the motor to the circuit board in the outdoor unit. The Model 142 ECM outdoor fan motor can be programmed with one or two operating speeds for single or two stage systems. These systems could be air conditioning or heat pump. The manufacturer can program these speeds to run virtually at any RPM they want. You may have noticed that some outdoor units now have some very odd looking fan blades on them. Manufacturers are building these blades to move more air and do it quietly. With the ECM motor, they can program it to run at whatever RPM produces the best airflow off of their newly designed blades. It's also a constant speed motor. Since there's really no value like our indoor motors in maintaining a constant airflow or even a constant torque because there's no way that an outdoor fan blade can pull more air through a dirty outdoor coil. So the constant speed simply makes sure that the fan blade runs at whatever RPM the manufacturer wants it to all the time. The 142 motor is also only built in a one-third horsepower application. We just recently introduced our second generation outdoor fan motor, the model 142R in 2008. It's more similar in design to the model 3.0 variable speed motor. What I mean by that is it now has a single electronic control board that is also fully encapsulated. It has increased surge protection and it also has built in black box technology. Black box allows us to pull information out of the motor in the event of a failure and find out if the motor failed or if something failed the motor. That lets us know if there's a way we can make the motor more durable. We also now make the 142R in a one-third and a one-fifth horsepower application. And finally, we also improved the start routine on the motor. If you've noticed on our variable speed and even our X13 motor products, when the motor first turns on, sometimes it rocks back and forth a little bit. That's not really a problem in a motor that sits down in the furnace, either in the crawl space or basement or attic that nobody sees. But outside, when that fan blade rotates back and forth a little bit before it gets going, some customers think that's a little weird. So we improved the start routine on the motor so that now, unless you're just watching that thing for a whole hour to see when it first turns on, you're not going to catch that half second that it may go the wrong direction before it goes the right way. The mounting of the outdoor fan motor is not really anything special, but I like to explain it because sometimes when you look at it, something just looks a, a bit off. We like to mount all of our outdoor fan motors, and I'm, I'm going to use this variable speed motor to demonstrate. We like to mount the motor in the, down, in the shaft down position. And the reason we like to do that using this cutaway, you can see that the molded portion of this can would force any water that got onto the control to roll down and off. And even if it got in between the control and the motor, there would be no way for that water to be pulled all the way back up in by the control and cause any damage to the control. Well, a lot of manufacturers wanted to mount their motor shaft up. And if you do it shaft up, we realized very early that now our control can basically becomes a swimming pool. Somehow water is going to find its way between the motor and the control and get in here and cause damage to the motor. So whenever you see our motor mounted in a shaft up application, you may notice that the control looks a little odd. What we literally did was turn the control upside down so we still have that molded portion of the can on top forcing the water to roll off. However, now the plug from the motor to the control doesn't work so well. So that plug is eliminated and when you see it in a shaft up application, you'll see a little umbilical cord coming out of the side of the motor and then going up underneath the control with a plate on the motor. I think you can see the picture of that right now. 
So there's also one other application that we use. We do have one manufacturer that likes to mount the control remotely. So they will mount the control over off to the side out of the uh, weather and have the motor out on the fan blade. So three different ways the motor could be mounted. Uh, all of them having to do with keeping the motor as reliable as possible. Troubleshooting the 142 series outdoor fan motor is actually quite simple. And we've included it in our current generation ECM service guide that you can download or print from the dealer toolbox. This motor really simply operates with just two inputs. It has a high voltage input that it needs for power all the time and it has a communication input to tell the motor when to turn on and how to operate. The wiring diagram is going to be in the OEM system, which could be either in the outdoor unit that the motor is contained in or might be found in the OEM manual that comes with that system. In either event, you will need the manual or the schematic that comes with this motor. We make the motors with any wire color that our manufacturer specifies. So I can't tell you this color will always be the L1 wire or this color will always be the 24 volt wire. You will have to get the schematic that comes with the system. So let's start with the high voltage input. The 142 motor can be powered with either 208 or 230 volts AC and the power to the motor can be plus or minus 10%. So we would literally find the schematic, and you can see the example schematic that I have here. Find the line one and line two wires on that schematic at the OEM control board. Turn the power off, of course, first. Disconnect those two wires. Turn the power on and check for voltage at the L1, L2 connection. Now, if that wasn't a plug, if that was just individual terminals on the board, we could just put the meter leads right on those terminals. If it was a plug, we would definitely need to turn the power off remove the plug and turn the power back on to check the voltage on those terminals. If we have 208 or 230 volts at the terminals going to the motor, then that input is correct and we can move on. If we do not, we have to find out why the power that is needed at the motor is not there. The second input is the communication to the motor, which in the case of the outdoor fan motor is just 24 volts. Remember that this motor can be either one speed or two speed depending on if we have a single stage or a two stage outdoor unit. To get this call, to get this 24 volts to the motor, there has to be a call for cooling or heat pump at the outdoor unit. So first we want to confirm that our indoor unit is giving the proper demand call to the outdoor unit and then we can confirm whether that voltage is making it from the circuit board in the outdoor unit to the motor. In this case, we would find the either Y1 or Y2 wires, the 24 volt communications to the motor, and compare them to the common wire going to the motor. If we know we have a call at the outdoor unit for first or second stage, and we do not have 24 volts going to the motor, we shouldn't expect the motor to run. We need to find out where that voltage was lost. If we do have 24 volts going to the motor, and we've already confirmed that we have high voltage going to the motor, then the motor is failed. There really can be no other problem. So it's a very simple motor to troubleshoot, but you will need the manufacturer's schematics, which may either be in the outdoor unit or in the OEM manual. If the Model 142 outdoor fan motor needs to be replaced, you'll find that it's always sold as one part. The motor and control are always sold as one part, even if it's a remote mount application. Unlike the variable speed motor, we only troubleshoot and replace the outdoor motor as one piece. You'll always want to go back to the manufacturer of the appliance you're working on and get the motor that matches that model and that size system. And when you go to install the motor, you'll want to install it exactly the way the manufacturer has specified in that system. If you haven't already worked on a system that has an outdoor 142 ECM fan motor, or if you have installed them and just have never had to work on one, hopefully now you realize that if you do, they're actually very simple motors. And hopefully you've also realized that there's really not much that can go wrong with this motor.